the gangs in South Africa is the 26th, is the 27th, is the 28th. You understand? They control in the prisons. You know this cut in my face. I got it because of the number. I was very young and didn't know what the number really means to me. This role has, has, has touched me so, so deeply because I grew up in a place called Belar, um, which is not far from where we shot this film in Elsie's River. And Ernie Lastach for me growing up was one of the most notorious guys, like people feared him all over the Western Cape. So for me playing Ernie Lastach Solomon as a young teenage guy in this film was one of the best characters that I think I've ever played. Like he's very curious about where you're from and where's your roots from. So he's very family orientated. Ernie was in grade one for four years. He left school at the age of 13 in standard one. One of the things that I was so interested in in terms of the character was the idea that his surname Solomon meant so much to him because of his lack of identity. He looked in this character, the Solomon character, to find who he was. Solomon was King Solomon, was something, something big. So when his cousin came along, Desmond, as a antagonist, anything that Desmond told him to do or kind of related to him hugely affected this character. So if Desmond told him to go and do something bad in the neighborhood, he, he would go and do it on behalf of Desmond because then Desmond would accept him as a Solomon. Eventually, Ernie realizes that he doesn't need Desmond. And he comes to the conclusion that he's in fact a Solomon and he doesn't have to prove to anyone that, that he's a Solomon because it's in his blood, it's in his DNA. I'm actually getting goosebumps right now talking about it. It, it shows that he really, he took a stand and, and realized that that in order to survive, he doesn't need to be someone else. All he has to be is himself, Ernie Lastach Solomon. And that's when he realized that he was a lucky man. Um, in terms of Ernie Lastach, uh, okay, I haven't personally met the guy. Um, I can only tell you what I've heard and you know what I've been told, etc. And um, like I've heard that he's this big gangster and uh, that he was quite a, you know, um, quite an evil guy. So for me meeting Ernie and then talking about um, his teenage life growing up and all his survival mechanisms that he had to use in order to survive really makes you understand the, the, the level of, 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 of challenges that him as a person had to, had, to, had to face on a daily basis. Gordon set out to do here was not to create the sort of proverbial, the typical coloured gangster movie, which has been, uh, been on our screens for years and years and years in this country. But what we did is we, we told the story of a life, a life, an extraordinary life of a man who through extraordinary circumstances has found himself in a position where he is now. It, it really started with finding out, doing testimonials of the real guy, Ernie Lust of Solomon, and him kind of revealing part of his life and then taking little bits and pieces of that. And the way we made this film was uh, different from what any other script would be. Normally the script would be written, rewritten, 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 and then greenlit, and, and then looked at again before you go out and shoot. Um, in this particular circumstance, things were entirely different. We started with the end of the film, and we worked our way back into the beginning of the film. Once I'd written the script backwards and I'd written into the beginning of the movie, we edited the movie and then we'd re-edit and reshoot and re-edit and reshoot in order to get the film into something that people would be able to understand. What a wonderful experience that we've had, uh, shot over a six, seven month period, uh, mainly in the, in the area where we are now, in Elsie's River. All shot on the HD camera on a Canon 5D. The community was always helpful and I think for the film to be shot in the actual place where the real guy grew up in. I think you, you, there's no other place we could have found to shoot this film. These white guys came to us and asked us for, for assistance. We thought it's because of we're going to help the community with the, with, the, with the movie that they're rolling. So the other people, they can know about Elsie's River and this place here. And the growing up of Ernie Lasta. So we thought, okay, it's opportunity just to show, show the people of the world how we grew up in this community 
The other elements that were entirely different was we only had a crew of five people, which seemed to have worked very well in the community because the community was really about a lot of people out of work and a lot of kids running the streets. So these people sort of engaged us and we engaged them and we had some great help from some of Ernie Lustig's people um, from the neighborhoods who helped us kind of make this film and without them we could not have made the film the way we made the film. With Gordon and, and, and Mark, the producer, they were very comfortable with using raw, raw talent within the community itself and for them to also see what it's like to be on a set and to see what it's all about, you know. So for them, I think it's always all, also been a very um, good experience and, and they, the, you can see the appreciation on all their faces. They were here every day shooting with us, talking with us, every morning and evening when they left. They, we told them goodbye and stuff, everybody was happy, they can't wait to go sleep because by the next morning the people are going to come again and stuff. They, they aren't really um, your, your standard family structure, you know, mother and father, um, it's, it's usually single mothers. And, um, you know, mothers work all the, all the time. Some families are plagued by domestic violence, which is, which is a huge problem here. Drug abuse, alcohol abuse is huge. And I think a lot of the guys, the, the young guys, um, you know, they see the gangster leaders, etc. And, you know, because there's no other positive role model, um, they tend to, to aspire to become like, like, like those guys, you know. This is my personal opinion, is why they become part of the gangster culture, is because um, it's, it's, it's an alternative to the family that, that they never had. You know, and it's a sense of belonging. And there's a lot of children who grow up without fathers because of this number. I mean, I've grown up in, 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 in an environment where there's, there's violence, not, not just only in, to the outside world, but in my own family in itself, there's been violence. And so to see these things firsthand and now to portray a role and, and become this character as Ernie <laughs> has really touched me. Um, has touched my heart. Lots of stuff happen in our communities, like violence and stuff. People, they don't know what's going on and it's not right. Some of us don't even know what to do. You'll be surprised by the level of violence. I'm always amazed at it, that that one human being can be that careless with another one. But yeah, it's, it's the norm, you know, if you don't do that, you, you basically, um, you're weak, you know? So, so you, you, you gotta, from a very early age, these, 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 these kids get taught that, you know, the way to resolve a problem is not by talking, not by communicating and resolving it like that. It's by fighting and pulling out a knife and pulling out a gun. Because for a lot of these guys, to take somebody's life is, it means nothing. Uh, I promise you, I know a lot of guys that have killed a lot of people and they, you know, they just don't care. I don't know if you heard the word daughter, you know. Um, if you, if you, if you not, and in daughter, the way I understand it, is, 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 a, is a man, he's a guy, you know, he's, he's, he's a fully fledged man. And a lot of the guy, a lot of, I know of a lot of uh, young guys that actually went out of the way to go to prison so that they be, could become in daughters, could become part of the, 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 the prison gang number uh, thing. And, um, you know, it's in the mistaken belief that, you know, that is what uh, um, qualifies you as a man. The thing about the lucky guy, the lucky man, eh, is when you go to jail, you come into a room, you see friends who live in your neighborhood, you know, they introduce you to people, other guys who don't know, starting to know them, they belong to your gang, and that's how you start the family in jail. Every day, every morning, we stand up, we greet each other, like a normal family would do at home. And so that's how you survive in prison. You must belong to a gang. If you understand the system, you will survive. So your, 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 your comrade in arms that is with you in prison, if you also understand the system, then you can work together. As a gang member, he is just like my mother and my father's child. We have the same blood. Where he dies, I die with him. Yes. If I die, he die with me. I was lucky because I came out of prison as a healthy man, as a wise man, 
I learned something. They do learn something. There's a very positive element of them being able to sit still in prison um, and learn who they are in prison. And that's what this story speaks about. It speaks about Ernie's journey of becoming a lucky man and going to prison and, and finding himself in prison. They wanted us now, with this experience, go to the kids and tell them there's no life in prison and crime does not pay. I have 37 years of experience in this number and I did learn something. But what I've learned is what I tell you now to be more serious about yourself, to be not in the number. <laughs>